The average worker bee only lives between six and eight weeks long. Each day is a day running 200 miles an hour. They're working day and night. So a bee life is very short and she makes every minute count. The average hive of bees is maybe 70 to 80,000 bees in that hive. And like every bee inside the hive has a job and every bee knows what to do, when to do it. It's not like you got to have a foreman or a superintendent standing over your back to tell you what to do. You know your job from day one in bee life. The most thing that amazed me about honeybees, they can't talk, but they can communicate in many different hums, dances. That's fascinating. A bee can do a dance and tell the, uh, her sister where the nectar is, approximately how far it is, and just, just about what kind of nectar is going to be in that area. These are some fascinating little insects we have here. Honey ready to be eaten. Straight from the bees, ready to go in your mouth right now. I did this so long, it just kind of comes natural. What I do now, I put a little dot on the back. This is called marking the queen. I've lived in and out of Detroit uh, ever since I was 18 years old. I like living in big cities when I was younger because that's where the money was. I was a crane operator. That's a very tense job and it's very dangerous. So I have 15 to 20 people's lives in my hands and feet at all the time. One time when I was in, living in Detroit, I owned almost a whole city block of houses. I was a landlord. One morning about two o'clock, one of my tenants called me and told me one of my houses was on fire. And I wasn't worried about the house burning down so much as I was worried about my tenants in the house. I looked in the house and I saw the fire burning, so I didn't have my key, so I kicked the door in. And when I kicked the door in, the fire sucked me in the house. And when it sucked me into the house, it sucked me down a flight of stairs and it knocked me unconscious. Some kind of way I pulled the mattress off the bed and pulled it over my body, and that way the fire didn't touch me. But when the fireman came, the smoke was so dense, the smoke wouldn't come out, and it's like it was a barrier. I can remember taking my last breath, and that was kind of scary. I remember taking it, and I don't remember anything uh, after that. They looked for me uh, quite a while in the house, and. One of my other tenants was looking in the window and she saw a plaid jacket that I had on. She finally convinced the fireman to go back and look for me again. So once they decided to go back in, they put the oxygen tanks back on and the mast and got all the lighting. So they went back in and jaked the mattress off of me and drug me out and dumped me out up in the yard in about two and a half, three feet of snow. And all of a sudden, my chest jumped. And so my heart started beating again and uh, they had pronounced me dead up there. I'd have went on, I'd have busted hell wide open. 
I can sometimes still visualize a wall of fire from the accident. After the fire, I had to retire because my lungs would burn up. Uh, today, I only have maybe 25% use of my lungs. And when I realized I was going to have to retire from work, I didn't know what the world I was going to do. I, I went through a thing of depression because I didn't know what I was going to do and or how I was going to make it or whatever. My father, he was uh, a great man. He was 97 years old when he died. And he was a minister for about 60 some years of his life, and uh, we kind of grew up in a religious background. I've always had religion in my family, but I pay more attention to religion now since my accident. Dying and coming back, it made me uh, appreciate life. It made me start paying attention to all the animals, the insects, the grass, the trees. I pay attention to everything. Where it used to, I would look over stuff, you know. If I saw the grass, it was just grass. But now I got a tendency to just, just kind of appreciate the grass, the bees, the birds, the animals. I watch the blooming of the flowers, uh, the changing of the seasons more. Everything that's in the world, I appreciate everything now. Where I didn't really pay that much attention to it before I got hurt. I got tired of the north, and I always liked the south, so we came here, and then I could plant my garden, and. That's when I, I really got in touch with nature, when I started planting the garden. And once I started raising the garden, my garden didn't do that well because I didn't have pollination. You got to have something to pollinate these crops. I found out this is what I needed to do, get honeybees on my property. Hey, I got hooked, and it's kind of like a drug. It's, it just kind of grabs you and holds on to you. A lot of people don't have the time to, uh, they just think a bee is a bee. No, a bee is not, just not a bee. Every creature on the face of the earth is put here for a reason. Everything got their purpose here. And the honeybee, I think, is the most important insect that we have on the face of the earth. I got a second chance to live, so uh, I'm gonna make the best of it, so the bees is, uh, evidently, that is my calling. This is my religious part of my life, uh, these honeybees. In the Bible, uh, anybody will tell you they have heard this passage in the land of milk and honey. Now, uh, what made the honey? So it's got to be cows and, and cows and bees in heaven, because the land of milk and honey. There you go, sir. Come on around. We've got free sample of honey. We've got live honeybees right over here. And you're gonna need energy for the rest of the day. So get your cookie. It's all about catching the young people and try to get them involved in doing exactly. something that's positive. Exactly. So those kids, that's our future. Exactly. Those bees are our future. Exactly. So this is my whole uh, purpose of life. And young man, eat some of that honey every day. You watch your allergies start going away. Teaspoon in the morning, teaspoon in the afternoon. If it works, I'm going to call you and get some more. My please. number, honey, give him one of my... Uh, Give him one of my cards. Card. Give him one of my cards. And I put it in the mail. All you got to do is pay the shipping on it. Get it to you. And I hear it. Got your energy stop right here. Come on up and get a free sample of honey and look at the live honeybees. Everywhere I go, uh, I'm always talking about bees, uh, working bees, explaining to the people and the kids about how important that the bees are and the function that the honeybee do. And I get a kick out of going all over the world talking about honeybees. And I learn a lot and I put out a lot of good information out there.
did I ever want to follow my father's footsteps? Yeah, one time I did. Uh, but as to first to have my own church and stuff like that, no, I don't think I want to do that. After my accident, I could understand uh, what he was trying to get everybody to realize in his whole ministry. And uh, I guess everybody got a ministry of their own. This is, this is my life.